everybody get them shake hands, but I don't think that's good. <laughs> Look at somebody and give, tell, give a high, a high Corona 5. God is so good all the time. We're going to try to put this on uh, live. We're going to try it anyway. It is good. It's all right. Isn't God good? All the time. All the time, God's good. <laughs> I, I was thinking, that, uh, thinking about all this, you know, as the days progress and as they find out more things about the virus, we find out that the, you know, still the guidelines are the same. Keep your hands clean. Don't touch your eyes. Don't touch your face. I'm sitting here doing it. When you got allergies, it's hard enough to do it. Amen. Uh, but don't touch your eyes. Don't touch your face. As of last week, I could go not to PCDC at night, but I could at least go in the daytime to B5 uh, in the morning. And now I can't even do that because uh, Pitt County cases. And so this is very serious, but again, there's no need to fear. Just make sure you do what they tell you to do. Amen? You know, I thought about that too. This came to my mind too. You know, thinking about as the times change, because now the curve went up, and pretty soon the curve's going to start going down. And as the curve goes down, you're going to see some good things. And the reason the curve went up is because more testing was available. Because there's more testing available, there's more positives, but at the same time, there's more negatives too. So it's not like, you know, oh my God, now we've got all these positives. Why, well, we got a lot more negatives than we do positives, and so that's good. I don't like living negative, but in this case, I do. Amen, it's a good thing. You know, before I got married, I had six theories about bringing up children. <laughs> now, this is what somebody told me. Before I got married, I had six theories about bringing up children, and I have six children and no theories. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's okay to have. All right, so we're gonna we're gonna be just a little bit. I, I'm uh, how many have seen anxiety? Hey, I'm not on. All right, let's see here. How about now? Is that better? All right, there we go. How many has noticed anxiety? I, I, I went to Walmart on. Uh, let's say I went to Walmart uh, Friday. I think it was. And uh, when I went to Walmart, I just went to get some stuff. Again, not going crazy. I went to get some stuff. And when I went to get the stuff, uh, of course, you know, I like this little saying. Somebody said they went in and asked one of those stock people at Walmart, what aisle are the nuts on? <laughs> he said on the toilet paper aisle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, buddy. So, so I go to Walmart and I'm walking by the toilet paper aisle. And I'm thinking, well, eventually I'm going to have to stop by. And still it was empty. And somebody came up to me and said, at 4 o'clock, they're going to start, they got more toilet paper, but it's going to be in layaway. You know times are hard when you're laying away in toilet paper. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> so, so I go in there uh, after a while, I, I think, it, I don't know what time it was. And, and uh, it was really funny because it was, you know, when I walked in, I, I saw people walking out with toilet paper, and they were walking out with multiple, a multi-pack of toilet paper. And I said, wow, what is all this? So I walked back in the layaway, and I said, I'm looking for a certain brand. And they said, there it is right there. It's the last one. And I said, well, break me off one. They said, no, you get to get the whole thing. I said, yeah, well, watch. They said, no, we prefer you take the whole multi-pack. And I said, well, I want to share it. They said, you are sharing. You're not taking more than this. Take that. I said, okay. And so me and Arm Guard went and took it to my car. <laughs> uh, so so uh, uh, again, now now the big big stores are saying since all these people started hoarding this stuff, the big stores like Costco and I believe Walmart too and others are saying, okay, you bought more than you needed, more, more, more than you needed, you can't bring it back. You're stuck with it. So there again, we don't need to be buying, we're not stored up for the next six years. We're just Get what we need just in case there's a week or two when you can't get to the store, especially if you get in. But again, you can call people. They can go for you. Again, call the church. You need something. Call the church if you can't get out. We'll make sure somebody gets it. Go the same thing in my neighborhood. So anxiety. That, <clears throat> that's been the biggest thing <clears throat> is anxiety. And so we're going to talk about that. We're going to look at there. 
Uh, we talked about this uh, a little bit on Tuesday night, but, uh, uh, so because we didn't have that many, I, I went ahead and put it today because I knew that some would be here that weren't there Tuesday night. And plus, if this thing goes live like I wanted it to, it's a chance for it to get out. But all stressed up and no place to blow. Think about it. All stressed up and no place to blow. Amen. Uh, <laughs> you know, the biggest thing I'm hearing this day, the biggest thing I hear, I hear it everywhere I go, I see it everywhere I go. What if? What if? What if? What if? And how do I? You know, what if I get it? What if somebody else gets it? What if they shut everything down? What if? What if? What if? If you're hearing what if, that's anxiety. So when you hear what if, remember when somebody's always thought, what if, what if, what if, they're anxious. And that is the big thing going on right now. And how do I, how do I avoid it? How do I keep away from it? Uh, how do I take care of myself if I do get it? So it's what if and how do I. So let me just show you something. What if I catch the pandemic? All right, watch this. There's a slight chance. There's a slight chance all of us can catch it. Slight chance. If you look at the total population, it is a slight chance. Now, I'm not saying that you can't get it. I'm not saying go out and live haphazard. I'm not saying don't follow the CDC guidelines. You do what they say because that slight chance, I don't want to be one of the slight chances. Okay? So there is a slight chance. What if I catch the pandemic? There is a slight chance. What if I catch the pandemonium? There's a 100% chance you catch the pandemonium. You get caught up, you know, I'm in the store last night, and like I told you at prayer request time, I'm in the store, somebody walks in and says, well, my social security check don't come in until next week. But I heard they're shutting everything down tomorrow night. Well, what I heard was they're shutting all the stores down at night. The 24-hour stores are shutting them down so that they can restock and they can clean up. So, again, that's a whole lot different than shutting everything down for weeks. Now, if they're going to, I haven't heard it yet, but if they do, well, okay. But again, that's what if. Remember, what if I catch the pandemic? There's a slight chance. Can I catch the pandemonium? There's a 100% chance because people around you, just getting around you and watching the way they act. If you ever sit down and try to eat slow and you're enjoying your meal and somebody sits down with and eats like they've not missed their last meal and they got to eat it before they go out in battle and they're going... And next thing you know, you find yourself eating fast too to keep up with them so you can talk to them or whatever. The same way, if you're not careful, you can get caught up in the pandemonium. Even if it's just a little bit. A little bit is too much. We're God's children. We do not have to walk by fear. We do not have to walk in the pandemonium. We have to live around it, but we should be showing folks that there is a better way. Okay? So now, now watch this. Anxiety is, is normal. It is. It's an adaptive system in the body. It, it tells us when we're in danger. So we need this normal adaptive system in the body. We need this anxiety because it keeps us when we need to be. It keeps us on edge. It keeps us looking. It keeps us aware of our surroundings and to watch out. If I go step out in the road, I will feel anxious until I look both ways. Because I know what traffic can be coming. I know... That, that, that if it's raining and it's thundering and lightning, I know not to carry a metal pole outside. It's healthy. Okay? So, so what it means is that dealing with your anxiety does not involve eliminating it. Some anxiety is healthy. Somebody say healthy. healthy. But it's not eliminating it. It's learning how to manage it. Okay? We've got to learn how to manage our anxiety. So, so here we go again. I'm just going to try to go through this. I'm not going to keep you long, but we're going to go through because so we're going to go through some exercises. I put a lot down there. Didn't want to miss anything. Just because you're experiencing anxiety does not mean you're in a dangerous situation. Can I say that again? Just because you feel it inside doesn't mean that it's there. You can get around people with anxiety. Last night when the woman said, oh no, they're closing everything down. The first thought that hit my head, I better go grab some stuff. No, I was there for my father-in-law. I was there getting his groceries for him. And I said, what I tell y'all? Stop it. I said to myself, stop it. Do not get caught up in this pandemonium. And so I went about looking for my father-in-law's groceries. 
Just because you think something does not mean it's accurate. How many people think something's happening and it never does? You just know it's going to happen. You would put money on it and it never does. 88 reasons why Christ should come in 88. Well, the number one reason why he's not coming is because he weren't ready. Okay? People read that book, they're ready for Jesus to come. Guess what? The rapture did not take place. If it did, then all of us are in trouble. Look at somebody say, buddy, you in trouble now. All right, so now watch. Thoughts are random and sometimes insignificant. And often our minds can run wild, creating situations of what if that may not have any factual basis at all. Okay? Suddenly our mind is running wild in the wrong direction. We begin to feel anxious. And what if, what if, what if? Matter of fact, once this goes, there is a smoke detector in our brain. It accesses the level of safety or threat, and it initiates the fight, flight, or freeze response. I want to think about some animals. <coughs> I do not have the virus. I have allergies. Y'all know me all these years. I cough all the time. Please, I'm not coughing in your face, though, and I promise you I haven't licked any doorknobs before I got in here. <laughs> Number one. What kind of animal, when, you, when it gets in a bad situation, fights? Lion, tigers, and bears. Can somebody say, oh my? Lions and tigers and bears. Oh my. Okay. Now, now, who fights? Deer? Think about it. Other little animals, they fly. Birds, they fly. This morning, there was three buzzers in the middle of the road enjoying their morning constitutional. There was guts everywhere. And I disturbed them, and they tried to get the very last drop before I got there. But just before I got there, guess what they did? They flagged it. Okay? When I left, when I got looked over the mirror, they went right back and finished up those whatever they were. Good. All right. Freeze. Who freezes? Bunnies. Sometimes there's other animals. That sometimes the deer freezes. If, if you have those whistles on your car, instead of seeing a deer run, when the, when the deer hears those whistles, it freezes. Because it's confused. It doesn't know what's, what's going on. It's trying to reconcile this sound that it's hearing. Okay? So, there's fight, flight, and freeze. Some of us, when we find ourselves intense, we want to fight. Sometimes we want to fly. And sometimes we want to freeze. So, so here we go. We're, we're going again. Uh, let's just take it take it quickly. I want you to see this. This, the, this is the, the cycle that we had last week. And again, uh, I got it a little clearer for you. Long-term stress and worries and fears accumulate in your anxious mind. You get anxious. And, uh, you start long-term. You know, if this, if they just said this was going to happen in China, and we had no chance of getting it, what would happen? We probably didn't be thinking about it. It'd just be okay. But then we hear that it's coming to the U.S. We've heard it's in Greenland. And it says, it's just about over West Virginia. It must make some really good therapeutic medicinal moonshine. Okay. So, so worries and fears accumulating in your anxious mind. Your subconscious mind interprets those fears as real danger. Okay. Now the fight or flight hormones, your adrenaline uh, hormones are released from your subconscious to help you handle the danger. The problem is... There is no danger. I had a balloon uh, uh, Tuesday night and I forgot to get the balloon today, but I blew the balloon up. And I said, in normal circumstances, I started blowing the balloon up and blowing the balloon up, and I said, now here's the adrenaline building up in you, but because you got somewhere for it to go, and I just let it fall out, let it go out. So I blow it up and I let it go out. I said, but when you start getting anxious like this, but just before you have a panic attack, here's what happens, and I blew the balloon up and I popped it. There's nowhere for it to go. So since you don't consciously see danger, you don't recognize the out-of-context hormone sensations, then you also fear that. So in response to this increased fear, even more fight-or-flight hormones are released, and there's nothing to fight and nowhere to flee. And this just keeps on this big, big circle going on inside of you. And honestly, we do have something to fear, and that is, yes, yeah, fear is fear itself. We have something to respect, and that is the virus. Follow the CDC guidelines. Do what the CDC says. Do what they say. Okay? Uh, 
But at the same time, as you're doing what they say, you don't have to walk around in fear. Fear has torment. Who wants to walk around in torment? There's people right now that walk around how the world's coming to an end. I will tell you this. This is a prelude of what's coming. Because I saw another day say, in some stores now, they will not allow you to buy, sell, or trade with cash. You have to buy and sell and trade with cards. Because cash is dirty. And so they say you've got to use a card in order to buy, sell, or trade. What's that a mark of coming? Not right now. What's that symbol of? Coming. Mark of the beast. And you, you, you can't even go in and pay your light bill, especially with money. If you can't pay with your card online, guess what? So here it is again. This is a sign of what's coming, and it's coming soon. This should be something for us to celebrate in the middle of the day. I'm not celebrating the, 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 the pandemic. I'm not celebrating that, but I'm celebrating the time, knowing that our time is drawing short here. We got something coming, okay? So now, so then this, here comes the panic attack. So, so watch this. Anxiety, panic attacks. What happens is it prompts catastrophic thinking, more, more, most likely irrational, out of proportion to reality. You find somebody having a panic attack, you find somebody having an anxiety attack, they have lost it, they're, they're, they're in the what ifs so bad now, that their what ifs now have really turned, I'm going to talk to them, talk about it in just a minute, so, and the symptoms of a panic attack cannot be ignored because people with panic attacks, they will be taken to the hospital, be called a rescue squad because they have symptoms of a heart attack because their chest muscles are squeezing them and their heart's being pumping and their blood pressure goes up and, and they can pass out. This is some bad stuff. So panic attacks really increase with time and prevent us from functioning. So to prevent anxiety from increasing and interfering with our daily life, grounding exercises are recommended. Now we've, we've talked about this one time before in our mindfulness now classes, but I'm bringing it out again today. They help us manage uh, the symptoms of anxiety. So, so that, that, now let's watch this. I want you to see something. Emotional illusions. Listen to this. Emotional illusions. It's a very real threat. Emotional illusions are a very real threat, but they're also a very big problem because they're detected by your emotions. Listen carefully. They're detected by, your, detected by your emotions, but they cannot be detected by your senses. They can't even be detected by others. So you're here, you're having a problem. You're trying to trying to figure it out. And, and, and there's been times that you're going to somebody, you're having a, you're going through something very stressful at work or very stressful in the family, and the person all of a sudden now is seeing things that's not there, and they're hearing things that aren't there, and you say, go take a break. Just go take a break. Go sit down. Go breathe. Then you're, you're seeing it, but it's not there. That's what's going on. So it's not, it's not detected by your senses. It's not detected by others. And it's not going to be detected by you after the crisis. Emotional illusions. What it is, it's a false reality. And it bypasses your senses. So, so the cure... For emotional illusions is to reconnect to the senses. To bring yourself back to reality. So here's what we're going to do. You know, uh, remember how we talked about mindfulness breathing all those weeks we did mindfulness training? Well, today we're going to do it one more time. And here's what we're going to do. We're going to start with a breathing exercise. And we're going to all do it together at least one time. Now, now, now if you find yourself anxious, you know, if you're having anxiety, what do you do? You breathe in a bag because you've hyperventilated and now you have to get your oxygen content is very high and you got to get some carbon monoxide so you get a bag and you breathe in it you cover your nose and your mouth and you breathe in it to get some carbon monoxide back in you to calm things down you know you start having all kinds of stuff going on passing out you know getting dizzy but here's what we're going to do instead of getting your bag out here's what you do when you feel yourself getting anxious you're walking down the store and you see all the shelves empty you watch TV and, and, and you listen to everybody who's got something to say. Don't listen to everybody that's got something to say. Because everybody that's got something to say isn't saying anything. I watch some celebrities 
Those are in their Malibu mansions. Singing Imagine by John Lennon. And honestly, I wanted to throw up. Multi, multi millionaires talking about how bad they got it. Really. But then I thought some other celebrities who got up and said, we can do this, we can beat this together. Matthew McConaughey was awesome. He said, this is, this is an epidemic, but we don't need to get caught up in the pandemonium. It was a pandemic, pandemic. we don't need to get caught up in the pandemonium. Let's pull together. We're Americans. We can get this done. That was so awesome. So again, when you find yourself getting caught up, first thing you do is remember, and I'm going to tell you, you breathe in for five seconds, don't do it yet. You hold it for five seconds. Then you breathe out for five plus seconds. Okay? So here it is. Let's do it. Ready? Through your nose. Breathe in through your nose. Remember, breathe in through your nose. Your nose regulates your air. When you breathe in through your mouth, it is unregulated air. It's like having, having a gas without a regulator on it. Okay? So you don't want to, you don't want to breathe in through your mouth because you're just getting air, just getting a big old woof of air. When you breathe in through your nose, it, it monitors and digests the temperature. And it makes sure that it goes to your brain and goes to the right places. So here we go. We're going to breathe in through our nose. We're going to count to five while we do. We're going to hold it and count to five again. Then we're going to blow out through our mouth and count to five and just keep on going to the empty. Ready? Let's try it. You're feeling bad. You're in the store. You're seeing the stuff. You're watching TV. You're hearing all this stuff. And instead of, instead of, instead of letting anxiety get the best of you, do this. Watch. I was with somebody not long ago. Their blood pressure was going, the young guy, his blood pressure was going out of control. He was having some problems. His blood pressure was out of control. He couldn't seem to get it together. And, and, it, and his spouse was concerned about it because his blood pressure was so high and things were getting out of control. And I said, can you do me a favor? Can you breathe with me? And we started breathing as God is my witness. On his third time, his blood pressure went to normal. If this is not, if you don't feel good after the first time, do it again. Maybe do it three times. What you do is you continue the pattern until you find your thoughts slowing down, until you find yourself getting back in the game, okay? So here, here's the 5, 4, 3, 2, 1 method to reduce anxiety. And after this, we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna go out and tell people about it, okay? Tell people about this stuff. This is what they need to hear. They don't need to hear, oh, my God! We're not going to make it. What they need to hear is we can do this. We've got God. We've got each other. We can make things happen. We can follow the CDC guidelines, the HHS, uh, HHS guidelines. We don't have to be afraid. We can do this. So here's the 5, 4, 3, 2, 1 method to reduce anxiety. All right? First thing you need to do, number five, very first thing, when you feel yourself getting out of Control when you remember emotional illusions. When this emotional illusion is taking place, now you do not see reality. What you're seeing is an alternate reality. Oh my God, we're all going to die. No, we're not. Yes, there's going to be some people that die. Yes, there's going to be some people to get sick. Yes, you may be one of them that get sick, and you may be one of them that die. But. Remember, the chances are really, really small, especially if you follow the guidelines. And especially if you don't lick doorknobs. All right? So, now ready? Here we go. Five things. Number five things. This is the very first thing you do. Hold your hand up. Five. Find five things around you that you can see. You go, well, I'll, well I'm going to give you a few things, but I'm going to just show you something. And just take it when you see one, take your fingers down. Ready? Look. Uh, well, there's not a clock on our wall, but let's say, say uh, a carpet on the floor. Uh, pews. Uh, keyboard. One of the guys sitting next to me. The chandeliers. What am I doing? Why am I looking for that stuff? I'm grounding myself. I'm bringing myself back to reality. This is what you do when you find yourself. Remember, 
when you find yourself with an anxiety attack or a panic attack, now you're breathing in more oxygen than you need to because you hyperventilate, your chest starts hurting, your pulse goes up, your blood pressure goes up, you may pass out. You get dizzy and you have this emotional illusion going on. So the way to bring it back, start off with five things that you can see. It don't matter what it is, just five things around you. What are you doing? You're bringing, you're, you're moving the emotional illusion to the side. Are you ready? Big or small, recognize five items that you can see with your eyes. Number four, hold up four. Four things that you can touch, okay? That can be the chair you're sitting on, okay? That's one. It can be your leg, that's two. My hair, that's three. My, that's three. And now, my wallet, my shoe, this thing here. Now I've touched four things. Okay? So now, recognize four things that you can feel with your hands or body. Again, you're thinking, this has got to be the silliest exercise I've ever done. Trust me, it works. When you're, look, find somebody that's losing their reality, they're in an emotional illusion, you challenge them to do this, just like I challenge people to breathe, Every time, every time, every time they breathe, their blood pressure goes down, their pulse goes down, and they can think. Okay, now hold three fingers up. All right. Now, ready? Acknowledge three things that you can hear. It could be the sound of people talking, the sound of people walking, the laughter of children, birds chirping, clocks ticking, cars going by. The first thing I hear is my big mouth. Now I'm hearing Eddie laugh. Okay. Somebody do something. There you go. I've heard it there. So, so I, 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 I've, acknowledged, I've acknowledged four things. Okay? Or three things that I can hear. I'm licking my finger too. CDC guidelines says don't lick your finger, but I'm licking it anyway. I, you know, it's hard to break old habits. All right, when I was at the funeral yesterday, I walked down and talked to the family. Right at the start, I was shaking their hands, and I realized, oops. So then I started elbowing them. Okay. Now, here we go. Two. Hold your two fingers up. All right. Now, you need to acknowledge two things. What, you, what are you doing? You're engaging your senses. This, remember, when you're having an emotional illusion, your senses are disengaged. So, when you do this, you're engaging back your senses and you're fading out the emotional illusion. <laughs> so, two things I can smell. I know you're going to think I'm crazy right now, but you already thought that anyway. You can walk to the bathroom, smell the soap, outside and smell something in nature, lean over and smell a pillow on your couch, a pencil on the desk. This is always good for me. That does two things. Number one, it lets me know that I'm alive. <laughs> That's going to do it, if I need to switch kind of the odors I use. Okay, that's one thing. <laughs> okay, and let's see here. My shirt. So again, again, whatever it is, take time to smell. So remember, we're engaging our senses. We're pushing the emotional illusion away. We're engaging our senses. I know you're thinking, what kind of church service is this? This is an awesome church service. Because this is, this is telling you how to handle anxiety and emotional illusions. Okay? You say, where's the scriptures? I got one coming. Don't worry. Number one. Put a finger up. Ready? Acknowledge one thing that you can taste. It might be the aftertaste of coffee. Maybe gum. Maybe your last meal. But according to city regulations, it'll stick your finger in your mouth. Find something you can taste. And after you taste it, now you've engaged all five senses. Once you've engaged your senses, now breathe again. Do that breathing exercise. And, and I, uh, I saw this the other day. Actually, Stephen brought it to me, and I found it later on. But this is so awesome. It is uh, COVID-19. COVID-19. Watch this. 
Christ overpowers viral infectious disease. Joshua 1 9. What's Joshua 1 9? Have I not commanded you be strong and courageous? Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. Glory. Glory. Give Lord a hand clap of praise. Ready to go. That's another sound you hear. Guys, I'll go up here and play something, and, and, and uh, we're just going to pray. We're going to just pray, all of us together, we're just going to pray. We're going to pray. Pray for the world. Pray, pray, pray. When you can't do anything else, you can pray. Look at somebody say, God's got this. God's got it. There's never been a time when God didn't have it. God knew this was coming. This could be the, actually, this could be what brings in or ushers in the last, the very last days. Okay? So, so, let's all stand. Father, we know that the threat of this virus is real. And as we start learning more things about it and seeing all these law enforcement officers and the EMS guys getting infected, and as we see even the younger people getting infected, it's real. It's real. We can't deny it. But at the same time, our God is real. We don't have to fear the pandemic because God's got it. I do fear the pandemonium because people get hurt when people lose their mind. Today I showed you how not to get caught up in that. How to ground yourself when you feel yourself getting out of control. Recognize, we thank you God, we recognize emotional illusions. And God, we need you to help us Lord to move in the direction that takes us from those emotional illusions. Respect, Lord help us to respect the pandemic but to help fight the pandemonium. We lift our hands to you, God. You got this. You got this. You got this. I ask you right now, Lord, to help us all to realize and constantly say to ourselves and others, you've got this. And either way we win. Either way we win. I thank you, God, for all you do and all you say. In the name of Jesus, we pray.
And we'll see what happens this week coming up. Thank you, Lord.